Good morning and welcome to our service. Um, for today's um, service, I've chosen a scripture which is not often preached about in churches, but nonetheless, it's a scripture that's in the Bible, in a scripture that looks like it's straight out of the horror movies, Amber uh, Hammer House, House of Horrors, um, which tells our age. Um, but it's, it's, it's a scripture that sees human beings at their worst, worst form. And, and, and it's a scripture not for the faint-hearted, but it's a scripture nonetheless that I feel that as we celebrate mothers, as we celebrate women this week, particularly mothers, there's a scripture that we have to know that is there in the Bible to warn us. The Bible says, all scripture is profitable for teaching, for correction. So it's there for our correction. But as we come to the test, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word in the Bible is meant to be there, Lord. David said, your word is a lamb unto my feet and a light unto my path, that your word is uh, to illuminate and bring light into our darkness. And so, Lord, as we engage, O oh God, with your word this morning, we ask, O oh God, that your word would illuminate our path and, and encourage somebody, I pray, through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, and so, Judges chapter 19, and if you have time, you can read it, it's uh, up to 30 verses, verses 1 to 30, but we will engage with the first 15 verses or so. Uh, and the rest of the story is so gruesome that it's not something that is particularly worth repeating over and over again. But the Bible says that in those days, Israel had no king. And the Bible already in verse one highlights what happens when people do things according to what they think is right, amen? Uh, when people do things, not submitting to directions of God, that it can go horribly wrong. Uh, and in those days, the Bible said that um, Israel had no king and everybody did what they felt was right in their own eyes, amen? And so here, the Bible says that now a Levite who lived in his remote area in the hill country of Ephraim, took a concubine from Bethlehem in Judea, but she was unfaithful to him. She left him and went back to her parents' home in Bethlehem, Judea. Judah. After she had been there for four months, her husband went up to her to persuade her to return. So here is a man who is a Levite, one who is um, dedicated and consecrated to God, one whose lifestyle, one whose um, whole being is wrapped around God. Amen. And the Bible says that he, 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 he took a wife, but the Bible says that the, the wife was unfaithful. And, uh, and so here is a man who experiences um, disappointment. But, but, but he so loves his wife that, that he goes after four months looking for her. She, she goes back to her parents' house. So something about living with this man doesn't quite um, um, sit well with this woman. And she goes back to her parents' house. And as she goes back to her parents' home in Bethlehem, Judah, you know, this is where the land of the Messiah, this is where the Messiah would come from. So she goes there, and the man after four months, as women do, she's struggling and sees that he can't cope, so he goes to persuade her to return home. But the Bible says that um, his father-in-law, the, the, when her father saw him, she gladly welcomed him. So we see a woman who is beloved, beloved by the husband. 
Even though she has fault, her husband loves her. Amen. And I want to tell you that, listen, God knows your fault and my fault. And yet, despite our fault, God loves us. He still lavishes his love on us. And even when we want to return to the, to the kind of pit and um, wallowing in, in, in the things that we, he took us from, he comes. He comes, he's a beloved, and comes looking for us. Searching for us. And, and to us, we celebrate mothers. And they say every child, mother loves him. And, and the nature of mothers is that irrespective of how um, others perceive their children, they love their children. Others may see the children as drug addicts um, or um, whatever, thieves or whatever, um, but the mother loves them. They are, the mother loves them to the core. And, and, and so there's something about the, the belovedness of us. Amen. The mothers teach us, they teach us this unconditional love. And they emulate, and in the way they, they love their children, they emulate the, the unconditional love of the Father is shown through them. But here's the thing. As this man goes to, to, to try and persuade his wife, the Father, the Bible says, the Father gladly welcomed him. His father-in-law, the woman's father, prevailed on him to stay. So he remained with him for three days, eating and drinking and sleeping there. And the, 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 this tells about the generosity of the Father. Amen. Of, of a Father who is glad. Amen. That you have come back. You've, you've engaged. Amen. And he, he, he lavishes and, and, and the Bible says that when anybody, when a soul is saved, that the angels in heaven rejoice, and, and a big part is thrown, amen? And, and they said for three days they was eating and drinking. On the fourth day, they got up early, and he prepared to leave. And, uh, but the woman's father said to his son-in-law, refresh yourself with something to eat. Then you can go. Amen. Hallelujah. So the two of them sat down to eat and drink together. And that, that's a closeness again, amen, of, of a father, father-in-law in this case, who who exemplifies the 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 the, the the, the, the generosity of God our Father, amen, that, that God our Father comes and, 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 and does everything he can to persuade us not to leave his presence, not to leave his house, stay in the house. And this father-in-law pleads. And so the two of them sat together and the closeness that God says, draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. And I'm so, uh, so the, then they, then they sat and they ate and sat and drank together. And afterwards, the woman said, please stay another night. Go, then go up to, and then enjoy yourself. And when the man got up to go, his father-in-law persuaded him. So stay there. So he stayed there that night. And on the morning of the fifth day, the, he, when he arose to go, the woman's father said, refresh yourself till afternoon. So the two of them stayed together. So the fa this father is just so, so determined Stay in me, stay in my presence, stay in my, stay with me, live with me. Listen, you can get everything you want in my presence, in my house. You, you'll be more than, you, you'll be, you, I have more than enough to take care of you. Amen. You have more than enough. So you stay with me. And the scripture tells us what happens when we choose yeah, because God will respect our, 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 our choice. God will respect us as individuals. And, 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 and when we choose 
to leave the presence of the Father, where we choose to go our own way. Amen. And we, 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 we determine that it's better to be outside than to be inside. And despite everything that, the, that God tries to do to get hold of us and entertain us and keep us near him, we go on our journey because we think we are adventurous. We, can, we want to go. And so in the end, this man exposes himself and those traveling with him. Hallelujah. Are you with me, somebody? Like, there are people traveling with us. Amen. But as you travel, you carry people. Amen. As you are a mother. Amen. You carry your children. As you are a father, you carry your family. There are people traveling with you. And these are the people who pay the consequences of anything that you do that exposes your family to danger. And this man being a Levite who, who should be able to be connected to God, that this man being a Levite who should have a, 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 this, a direct line to God, this man chooses Amen. To go his own way against the, the wishes of the father who says, listen, stay another night, stay another night. And in the end, what he does is he brings danger to himself and to the party, traveling party. Now they get to a point, I'm jumping now, where they get to a point where nobody comes to welcome them. They, so they sit out in, in, in the open in the square, and an old man meets them and says, listen, and actually his servant was the first one who said, listen, let's, let's stop here. And the man in his own prejudice way said, no, I won't stay anywhere that is not full of Israelites. I won't stay, I'm, why should, these are strangers, I, they, they, they're not good enough for me. This, this, these cities are not, uh, uh, we want to stay in a, in a five-star Israel for hotel, hotel. We want to stay in places where people like us stay, people who look like us stay, people who, who behave like us stay. Amen. And in the end, what happens is that this young lady, this man uses the young lady as a human shield. Amen. The one who he came to rescue, the one that he came to get connected back to the one that he traveled to come to, to, to take back, persuade her to join him. He uses her as a human shield and sacrifices her. And in the end, what he does is so gruesome. Amen. That, uh, and I use this because mothers, 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 they, they are sacrificed every day on the altar of love. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. When the child has sleepless night and the child is, is, is crying at night, as a father, I find myself, I snore. It is the, it is the mothers who are awake. Maybe I'm different. Maybe there are fathers who, 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 who take care. But listen, when a child stomps their foot against a the stone, they want mommy. Amen? When a child is poorly, they want mommy. You, you, you know the story. You know the story of George Floyd. You know that the American six, six foot four tall guy, a huge guy, amen, being used on a knee on his neck, amen. His last words were, I want my mommy. This is a grown-up man. Hallelujah. Listen, mothers, you play an important role in the lives of your children. Even if they grow up to be giants, listen, mothers, you are so important and so core to their development that you should not underestimate, amen, your influence on your child. If a man, if a man, if a man, a man who has a family, he had a family, he has children. You with me? If a man's last word was, I want my mommy. Hello. Hello. That's, that's a George Floyd. You know the story. The BLM movement, Black Lives Matter. It is, that, 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 those were his last words. And I want to celebrate every mother who has been sacrificed on the altar of love for the sleepless nights and for all the things you've done that is unnoticed, or even children who are ungrateful. 
Children who were ungrateful. This woman was quartered and cut to 12 pieces. And each piece of her was sent to every tribe of Israel. She was cut by the same man who came to rescue her. Hallelujah. And I want to just say, people, we've got to cherish and celebrate our mothers. The women in our lives have to be honored. For far too long, we've used them as human shields. We've used them to block every attack that we've had. And they take, they bear the brunt of everything that we carry. Hallelujah, they're the ones who release us to be successful. They're the ones who worry most when, when, when things are going wrong. They're the ones who, who, who end up on their knees praying, crying out for their lost child. And I just want to celebrate you mothers today. And say, and all women, oh, this is a women's week. I celebrate you. You, you, you teach us a lot. I recognize you guys get sacrificed and you get quartered and sent out here, there, and everywhere. And every mother feels like she's an octopus. You have to have eight hands. One, this one is dragging you. This one is dragging you. I salute you. God bless you. And we'll talk next week again. The rest of the service will be, um, you will see, um, we'll log into S Sunday Night Live. Uh, that, 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 a pre-recorded service and we'll follow, we'll follow through the service. But I just wanted to share the intensity of this scripture. Go back to Ju Judges chapter 19, read for yourself and see. I, 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 and it was only because this happened that Israel said, never again. If we leave things to go, they'll go from bad to worse. And we, we can't, we can't go on like this. This was why Israel demanded a king like the other nations. This was what pushed them, amen, to go to Samuel and say, Samuel, enough is enough. We are, not, we, 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 we are done with this system. We want a king. But strangely enough, they had forgotten they had God as king. But because God is invisible, they forgot about him and they wanted a king that they could see with their own eyes. God bless you, God have mercy on all of us as we try our best to serve him. See you next week, God bless you.